Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back. As I look up at the clock, that never works because we <laughs> we just drain. We drain batteries or something drains batteries. But yeah, you know, I'm thinking, oh, wow, we're late today. But no, it's not really that late. It's no. just there's so much going on. Well, it's just that the clock is, it's so far behind or it's so far ahead, ahead. Like if we put new batteries in, it goes wonky. And then after about three days, it gets really slow. So we're just tired of taking it off the wall and replacing batteries. So we just let the clock, we let the clock be with itself. Yes. And I can't wait to do a uh, non-news um, video where we could have some deep diving spiritual discussions. And that is coming up later today. Uh, everything willing, uh, but right now there's just simply too much going on to talk about news-wise that we have to bring you guys up to date with, even though we did this one yesterday talking about is there a formal declaration of war near? Um, it sure feels like it, and you know, we, again, we want to thank our Patreons for your support. Yet, here you go. Um, this is San Diego. Look at that water bubbling up from underneath. There is so much going on right now. This is really, I mean, 2024 is the culmination in my mind of everything that started in 2017. I do see the, the, the eclipses as like bookends. And I do see 2025 as in some ways a new start, but not really like a real new, fresh, like, ah, thank God, you know, type of, you know, we're, we're done with the system. No, no, there's still a ways to go. Uh, there's still a ways to go for sure. But it, it, this is like the period where the chaos just ramps up and up and up and up. And now we're in that cycle where it's kind of starting to go absolutely bonkers and in, in so many different ways. This is Spring Valley, San Diego. Spring Valley, San Diego. Look at this. Do you know that San Diego, um, they, they got just a massive amount of rain. And by the way, you know, hang on tight because they're not the only ones. As you see people boating through, just trying to uh, stay above the water. And, you know, what can you do? What can you do? You just got to do your best. There's going to be challenges everywhere around the world everywhere around the world and then you get those people that if i said globe uh they'd make a comment try to distract the whole thing to oh i can't watch you you believe the world is round and spinning mm -hmm. okay well yeah go jump off that rock and go you know wherever you want to go uh again for those that will listen you know we'll keep speaking for those that want to distract we'll just ignore or move onwards but yeah houses flooded people just trying to save their lives you know these times are exceptional and again we send out our prayers to everybody that's going through this there's challenges everywhere look at these uh, records falling uh, the old record as you see uh, for rainfall san diego got 2.7 inches really really quick and you know here is the period of record the old record was 1967 as we could see all over the whole area records falling um, but you know it shouldn't be a surprise and for the south central u.s hang on tight and and we can attest hey we thought out we're so happy now they finally sent us the um the tape the electric tape for heating up pipes because we had frozen pipes for three days uh, and now that that's came, but that's fine. We're back in the sixties, but now, you know, you can't go under the house because it's a lake. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's really, really deep. So, I mean, there's a lot of things for a lot of people to worry about right now. Um, just people really going through it. And I think we should send the positive energy that way. So those again, east of Dallas, uh, east and south of Dallas, down to Houston, heading over into Texarkana, and then going on through Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Arkansas, and on up into Tennessee. It's going to be another uh, 36 to 48 hours of, of rain. And so this is the area that has had, you know, a massive drought, a really unprecedented drought. Let me 
just bring this up, by the way. And this period of time, <clears throat> we might negate that. We might actually get out of drought in, <clears throat> in the South Central U.S. Here we go. So, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Uh, as we see, California is totally out of drought. And, and that, that happened a while back. We still see we have some drought in, in southern areas of Arizona and New Mexico. The, the area that sticks out perhaps the most is the central uh, Louisiana cutting on across uh, through northern Mississippi area and on up into Tennessee. Again, the New Madrid is up in this area. There's a lot of water coming our way. A lot, a lot, a lot of water coming our way. And also, there is an atmospheric river that's developing um, that seems like it's going to be in existence for at least two weeks that's going to be pummeling, uh, pummeling the Pacific Northwest. Uh, again, area where you have Cascadia and, of course, the San Andreas Fault down in California. And we're talking about San Diego down at the lower end over here. So, you know, again, these conditions will, will change here and perhaps we will go from this severe and extreme drought to something not so extreme, but in such a quick amount of time that that's going to cause a lot of issues when the water uh, will not be able to be absorbed by the ground. I, I was out last night and uh, went out to the mailbox and heard this weird sound that I, I was trying to figure out what the heck is that you know is there some massive herd of something going by it was really strange then it hit me and I looked at an overhead map and and remembered what the neighbors had said he said that when we get extreme um, you know influx of rain uh, there's there's really a dry riverbed here that develops and then it'll end up connecting farther on down and i think that's what i was hearing was the water uh rushing down from a pond upstream and connecting to another pond but but making its way in kind of this you know huge uh avalanche of water and uh wow that was really curious thankfully you know uh the house is up off the ground so a lot of houses have pier and beam uh, construction in the area and of course with soaked lands you get get massive landslides now this is over in china it, it buried 47 people in two villages amid freezing temperatures uh, I, again send your prayers evacuated over 500 uh, this was a massive massive rescue operation in progress with at least a thousand rescuers 200 vehicles all around the globe again it's not just us that are suffering with the weather in in the u.s uk canada it's it's all over it's everywhere you look every continent all the different nations again uh, i understand our people understand that it's the average people in all these nations that are really um, suffering in these times of conflict and and obviously uh, in on many of our minds orchestrated uh, weather warfare that's going on and then we do see the sun is awakening again look at all these uh, m-class flares now there was a big uh, eruption and emission of a filament that again is mostly going to the south of us and and nothing has really developed as far as the kp as you can see here they were calling for uh, five or six on the KP index and, w and we have not gotten there um, but it does feel like as you can see you know the sun is rotating into that area with the active regions facing us more um, it, and it is waking up um, I'm just glad that we're out of the deep freeze so we don't have to think about running the generator non-stop but again <clears throat> every one of us is going to have a different issue and in in, in, depending on where we are to face oh gosh we are we are we're gonna have different issues we're gonna have different problems you know and we really have to weigh everything because there's a lot of things that we could complain about out there i mean there's a lot but it, are, is there any substance to it i think we need to save our energy for those who who need our help who need our positive energy and no matter what 
you're going through, no matter how things look, continue to look for the positive. Continue to find that silver lining. It is there. I promise we are definitely in control of our own surroundings and we can look at things. We can shift and turn things to a positive nature in our mind and in our heart and that really just helps to uplift everybody because as much as you might think we are not connected we are connected so if if you're you're having you know bad negative thoughts yes this does affect people around you um, if you're able to shift that or at least process through those negative thoughts, process through, try to figure out what is bothering you. Why, why, why is this um, cutting you so deep? Because we're all here to help each other. And the more we process through our stuff, the more we can help lift each other up and leave that dense, yucky stuff behind. Absolutely. And here we have only the eighth time on record that they discovered an asteroid and said it was going to hit and it did so <laughs> but this impacted the uh, atmosphere over berlin germany and it was a small one thankfully it was discovered three hours before impact and you know again small two to five feet made for a nice little show but you know th there's going to be more it it's it's obvious what's uh what's going to be in store for us is is definitely everything it seems like we're getting hit with the kitchen sink right uh in a 5-4 decision the supreme court just ruled that biden can remove the razor wires installed by texas on the border yeah here you go again you know and it was interesting because you you would see this coming because you were just hearing that texas was making progress and stopping the influx and then you get the Supreme Court saying, okay, pull it away now. I, yeah, and you have Abbott saying this is not over. Texas razor wire is an effective deterrent to the illegal crossings. Again, he will continue to defend Texas's constitutional authority to secure the border and prevent the Biden administration from destroying our property. You know, uh, again, this uh, people will call the question, you know, he's he's on the WEF page. Now, I've seen other people state that they are not tied to the WEF, even when they have a page up there. So you, you can't put anything against, um, you know, how do you how do you word it? You, you can't trust, as we've said, obviously, any politicians. You have to look at the bigger scheme of things. And even if you stop people influxing now, you have a massive amount of illegals already in place, a massive amount of what we know to be troops in place. And <clears throat> then, you know, again, they're just waiting for a certain signal. There's a lot of uh, curious things going on, to say the least. Mexico says U.S. Army weapons being smuggled across its border into Mexico. Hmm. Uh, Mexico said Monday that U.S. military weapons have been detected entering the Latin American nation, which blames firearms trafficking from its northern neighbor for fueling drug cartel-related violence. The Mexican Defense Ministry has alerted Washington about inflows of arms that are supposed to be for the exclusive use of the U.S. Army. And it's very urgent that an investigation be carried out. So, you know, again, we understand that when it comes to, and many of us have woken up to this a long time ago, uh, it, it, as far as uh, the war on drugs is more of a war of just simply controlling the flow of drugs. Yeah, you know, now you have certain states where anything is kind of legal and you have more homelessness than ever. Again, all these mind altering uh, substances, they allow truly for a demonic type of possession. And again, legal or illegal, they still do the same thing. They open doors, whether they're opening doors legally or illegally. And when you think of, again, uh, the military industrial complex, and, and uh, there was somebody that said they couldn't figure out how war makes people money. I just was boggled by that question. You, okay, well, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, videos that would explain that. But again, yes, the, the military industrial complex uh, is so big, so powerful. Nonstop war is obviously nonstop profits because, again, who pays for the military equipment? <clears throat> Ultimately, we do. 
who is it used against? Ultimately, us, humanity in general. And, you know, this is a, a, a nasty cycle. So when we see this, again, I feel that this is all about pretext, just like you just had Russia, uh, again, put in the legislation this time, the fact that what was done by czarist Russia is, is not valid anymore. So, you know, again, Russia wants Alaska back. That's, that's a pretext for what's coming. Um, I think this is a pretext, again, for what's coming. This is why maybe Mexico will be joining, and again, I expect them to uh, join China and Russia uh, militarily, along with many other nations, uh, in taking up arms against the U.S. Because, again, when all said and done, maybe Mexico gets Texas back, or, or parts of New Mexico, or southern part of Arizona. You know, it's, again, part of agreements that we're not privy to at the moment. But, again, Cindy has seen uh, that the U.S. is to be divided. And, again, there was also that Russian professor way back in the 80s that said the U.S. will fall and the U.S. will be divided. Now, he said four pieces. Cindy gets five pieces. Any way you look at it, um, it we probably don't have too long uh, to wait to find out how they will divide. The U.S. names Yemen Operation. Yes. Yemen. Okay, he didn't say Yemen. Mm -hmm. Yemen, Yemen. I'm always reading Sanskrit. So, you know, it's, and then I have, um, I have this tendency to pronounce uh, things the way you would in Spanish after studying Spanish and Italian. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely, it, it, you have to jump from one country, one, one verbiage to another. So, for all those that took offense at Yemen, sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, there could be other things to worry about, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. But the suggestion that you're naming an operation means it's it's going to be a longer term operation. And where did they name it? Poseidon Archer. Poseidon, yes. Again, they name them after Greek gods. Yeah, the U.S. military has long used names intended to influence international and domestic perceptions about its operation. The practice of using heroes of antiquity. Oh, wait a minute. That sounds like Genesis 6. Figures from Greek and Roman mythology was introduced by British Prime Minister Winston Churchill in World War II. Poseidon, Greek god of the sea. Ah, oh, yes. And when we think archer, do you know, again, uh, it was it was thought that archery was the ultimate uh, war practice, and in in the Hindu uh, world, the archers were kind of like the elite. It was the ultimate weapon. But then also, when we're talking about archery and archers, we're not necessarily talking about uh, arrows. We might be talking about missiles, because again, we start going down that root of weapons like the Brahmastra and and many others and these weapons have amazing ability to wipe things out and literally in the Mahabharata uh, it's said that there are weapons that exist uh, that could wipe out all life on the planet not only that other weapons that could exist that could wipe out the entirety of the solar system it's literally stated in the Mahabharata that there are some of these weapons that could wipe out the entirety of a solar system. Isn't that an interesting thing? And then, oh, okay, so I think we found our other video for today. Um, yeah, yeah, there's so much to share here. There's a real reason why they use these from uh, Greek and Roman mythology. Because, again, Greek and Roman mythology is the same as, as what we are seeing. Uh, it's coming from the same sources that come from the Fertile Crescent, from Sumeria, Akkadia, Babylon. Well, that too. And, you know, I mean, with our very, very limited history here in the West, I mean, I would think that they just continue to copy these names as the cycle goes through of war, times of war, and not war, um, that they're just kind of renaming the same wars, you know, their, their, their materials and the weapons that they use. It's like a tribute to them. It's like an honor to them. Wow. They kicked butt. They killed a lot of people. Let's name it this again. In some ways, this is again, another sacrifice to the gods. 
and uh, BP Earthwatch, I was interested in seeing uh, yesterday, he was talking about how Yahweh is not the God most high. And it was like, wow, okay, there are cracks developing. And, and yeah, people are seeing. This is the Great Awakening. Yeah, we're going to realize uh, we have always been surrounded by technology that would blow our minds. We've been living in this bubble most people not understanding the bigger picture, some people understanding it the whole time, but most not understanding it. And meanwhile, we have U.S. Navy SEALs that were missing in the Red Sea declared dead. A member of Yemen's Ansar, Ansar Allah, Ansar Allah, yes, resistance movement, previously implied the group's involvement in the incident. In other words, were they taken out by the Houthis? Well, you know, again, you're, you're not going to get clear, straight, definitive answers. So all the U.S. is saying basically is, you know, we regret um, to say that we lost them. Yeah, we regret to announce that after a 10-day exhaustive search, our two missing U.S. Navy SEALs have, have not been located, and their status has been changed to deceased. You know, and here we are. Uh, it's just so obvious this buildup, and I understand. You know, and and we've been meaning to put out more spiritually based ones as well because they are very enjoyable and they always make you feel refreshed. At least they do us. Um, but there's just so much going on right now too to keep track of Poland and Lithuania to hold joint military exercises around the Suwalki Gap. And again, this enclave of Russia, uh, Kaliningrad. And this this is all going to go hot and pretty quick because right now Russia is um, kind of wiping up in, in Ukraine in so many ways. But yet Ukraine is still striking deeper and deeper into Russia, attacking uh, cities and civilians. And, and this is what happens. Meanwhile, again, Israel... Uh, just a travesty what's going on uh, over in Gaza. Here, <laughs> I do expect, uh, again, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia to be uh, steamrolled very quickly, <clears throat> and then you would have Poland. Meanwhile, Taiwanese armed forces have deployed the Skybo-3 anti-aircraft missile system to Kenting in the Pingtung County in the south of the island to protect airspace due to the PLA violation of air defense identification zone. Well, yeah, they've been doing that forever. The PLA has been sending, you know, 10, 20 more sometimes aircraft over the uh, illus <laughs> illusory uh, border and, and bluffing. But at some point they will go. But, you know, again, it, I, it, it seems to me it would make sense to go bigger first, meaning, you know, Russia rolling through the rest of Europe uh, with their allies and, and a unified uh, Islamic uh, jihad helping them while the dragon uh, comes into the Pacific Northwest again with some help from Russia as well. Mm, definitely, definitely a lot going on, a lot of... Um, you know, possible possible outlets, possible changes. A lot of a lot of uh, crossroads coming up. I mean, that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm feeling, and I'm definitely feeling that um, increase in in energies as we move closer to this eclipse. It does feel like things are just going to get bumped up, up, up higher, higher, higher. Yes, absolutely. Now there was a power outage that halted the bullet trains in eastern Japan. And, you know, it was blamed on just hanging overhead electrical wires s hanging over the tracks. So the question is, how did that happen? You know, how did that happen? And, and this is, again, in Japan, we're always concerned about all the nuclear power plants. And, you know, again, uh, there's, there is obviously when there's war coming, there's potential for massive sabotage. We, we've seen that. We've had tons of it going on. In, in the U.S. and other uh, NATO countries already and over in the BRICS nations as, again, ter turnabout is fair play and the reality is the system uh, does attack 
uh, both sides and utilizes both sides to attack each other. Antigua and Barbuda, here you have uh, a little uh, visit going on here as China and the BRICS nations are extending their influence in, into uh, the Caribbean. Yeah, absolutely. Or Caribbean, if you prefer Caribbean to Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Caribbean, Caribbean. I'll say both so I cover both sides. There you go. There you go. Um, again, you know, this is the changing of the guard with power structure. Meanwhile, cholera outbreak in Zambia has killed at least 400 people infected up to 10,000 others. Now, when you look deeper into that, you find all the usual players are there doing their usual thing. Um, yeah, and and then, you know, this we're waking up. People are waking up. You understand how this works. Uh, solution is always offered for a problem, but who created... Who created the problem i wonder who who do you think created this problem i wonder who it could be well that's been a long-running joke i mean far before who was created hmm. uh yeah a ticking time bomb the doomsday clock will show the world has reached the most dangerous point ever ever warns u.n scientists i think they do this every couple months but you know again it, it is like we're going up this mountain and it keeps going up 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 and it keeps getting more challenging well it's definitely not going down 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 that's true immigration Im immigration <laughs> yeah, yeah immigration yes, immigration overtakes inflation as top voter concern now so when you see that finally the majority of people are more worried about all the people coming into the country illegally well you you finally kind of hit uh, a certain level of awareness so again it, it all points to the fact that we're getting very close to the bigger events as more uh stores are saying no cash accepted and you know again this is part of that shift and then of course well i mean just think of this if the u.s uh and nato loses the fight don't you think they're going to end up with new uh new currencies you're not going to have the U.S. dollar anymore. No. Uh, you, you know, again, this is all tied into uh, that do-over. I think we'll just leave it at the do-over part. You know, and, and when we talk about the DEA, GEL numbers, let me just bring it up right here. Um, one of the things that we really need to understand that they really put a lot of emphasis on as you see is is this is power purchase parity this is the defense budget real gross demand is the economic side of it and so you see major shifts in the economic side of things like for instance over here russia well what happens to russia's gdp goes up a lot 57 percent how about china's yeah, it, it increases. Now, with the U.S., it is drastically going in the other way. It's down 91%. The GDP is down 91%. I mean, can you imagine that? Can you imagine listening to any of the financial guys saying, well, the GP, GDP went down 91%. Uh, 91%? I, uh, uh, talk about catastrophic talk about catastrophic and here they're listing the defense budget at 732 billion here they're li listing it in 2025 at 32 billion well it's actually over 800 billion um, so again what does this mean Th this means that the, the, you know again the power system that is now does not exist in the future it's totally totally different it's bad news bears it is. And so, again, those that have prepared, you know, it's, it's going to be up to you whether you're going to want to share your wealth because you're going to find that there's so many people out there that, that haven't prepared at all, unfortunately. You know, or maybe, you know, somebody's idea of preparations is, is having an extra week of, of food and supplies. And, again, you'll have people that will say, well, that's all I could possibly do. But you, you can look to... Um, 
look to what is going to give you the most bang for the buck and also the most bang for your nutritional value. Again, if you're looking to all the stuff that lies in the middle of a regular big box store, whether it's Walmart or Costco or any of these other stores, um, you know, you could do better nutritionally. Patriot's Pantry and things like this. Look at their ingredient list. Really, uh, if it has high fructose corn syrup, I don't care. I don't want it. If it's if we're starving, I don't want it. No, and, 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 and people will be like, oh, that's crazy. If you're starving, you're going to eat anything. No, we're not going to eat anything because your immune system is going to get weakened. And uh, there is a direct assault on our immune systems. The, the power structure that would desire a lot less people on the planet they want people to think, well, you know, worst case scenario, I'm just going to tap in and eat anything. They'll eat candy bars. And, yeah. And your immune system is going to go haywire. Uh, again, the sugar gives you an inflammatory response. Have you noticed all the people with the turbo cancers uh, eating anything, especially, you know, stuff that's laden with high fructose corn syrup, just simple sugars, uh, dyes, all these things, carrageenan. We could go on and on with the list. Nitrates. You know, like if you have, you know, long-term jerkies and, and you look and, and it's loaded with nitrates, those are cancer causers. You, you really have to understand the bigger picture here. And, you know, often it is better to, um, to go without than to go ahead and give in to the, the, the real bad, horrible junk foods, whether they are prepackaged to last for 25 years or not. That's why, you know, our storage is in like organic lentils, organic beans. Um, we even uh, stress more uh, like amaranth and quinoa as opposed to just plain rice. Um, brown rice is better than white rice. Uh, we have stone ground oats, uh, which we love and, and literally probably could be um, okay you know, with just one, bo one, one bowl of oatmeal at night if you could get some uh, good organic milk from a cow. Uh, and if it's the time of year, you could throw in some berries. That's going to be wonderful, too. Uh, there is something called a yogic diet, and this is the way a lot of yogis eat um, and have eaten for a very long time. And they can subsist for long periods of time on, on very low calories uh, and, and do fine. In fact, live very long lives. You know, the, the fact is most of us in this world, especially Americans with their sad diet, standard American diet, uh, are not healthy enough to just go straight into something like that. So this is where we need to be um, building up our immune systems. We need to be detoxing ourselves from all the toxins and, and getting ourselves prepared for the challenges that are ahead. And I like watching this kitty. It reminds me of Sassy. You know, when I put a little bit of food down, Sassy, she 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 decides what those poor baby Dobermans can eat and when they can eat. So I have to intervene sometimes. Um, but yeah, I mean, we really have to look at our diet and and those other foods that are full of processes. They're not going to do you any favors. So it it might be a difficult situation sometimes. You know, deciding, gosh, do I eat this? and become inflamed and and be in a lot of pain on my way out or or do I fast and wait for something else to come along and probably do better you know I mean but it's going to be hard so many people don't know what's in those in those packages nor do they really care to look and I don't know to me it all seems like such a huge setup and, and a lot of companies are really making a lot of money you know saying oh this is good food and this is going to store for 25 years and that's not going to bode well in your body it, it's just not so we I mean we have a lot of different dried goods put away and the only thing I have to say about that is just you just want to make sure that you have a good way to keep any rodents and bugs out of it and what I've noticed is I actually put a baking soda aluminum free baking soda and I put it you know where all the food is like on the ground and actually on the food bugs hate that stuff I mean to them it smells like death they just hate it and it's not going to hurt your food it's not going to hurt you it keeps seems to keep the bugs and the mice away so far I've been doing that for a couple years and it seems to work yeah absolutely 
and then always have good water filtration and backup to backup water filtration so you know we have i think like six different water filtration options um and backup to it so as always guys we look forward to your comments thanks for being part of this family stay prepared much love source bless and namaste namaste